Hey, welcome to Shade Tree Mechanics. So today, we're going to show you something about windshields you haven't seen before. You know, they play a much bigger role than just trying to keep the wind off your face and the bugs off your teeth. In fact, they're a major part of the overall structural integrity of your car. You know, in the old days, you used to be able to replace the windshield yourself, but now it takes a pro. Isn't that right, Sam? Absolutely. Now, what we've got on this Dodge is we've got a rock chip right here in the windshield, and it's right in the driver's field of vision. Also has some cracks that are migrating out, so this glass is gone. It needs to be replaced. But on our Monte Carlo here, a few months back, we got a rock chip right here on this windshield, but it's not in the driver's field of vision. And again, a few years ago, this glass would have had to been replaced, but now there's technology available that will allow us to fix this thing and save us a lot of money. That's one of the things we're going to show you today. You know, folks, the windshield and the rest of the glass is very much a part of the design of the car. Of course, that means the glass itself has had to change over the years. And Sam, you know, in the old days, like the antique cars you like to restore, you use nothing but plain old window glass in this. You can see it's very thin, doesn't have much strength. That's right, and it's really brittle. It sure is. Of course, now, in the windshields, they're using a laminated glass like this. And you can see they've got two pieces of glass. It's got a fine film between it. This holds them together. That's right. When this glass breaks in an accident, of course, the uh, laminated membrane holds the glass together, also helps to hold the occupant in the car. If someone were to fly up against it, has a certain amount of give, and it comes back and keeps it all together. It sure does. And, of course, when you do hit it, you stand less of a chance of being all cut up, too. That's right. Now, the third type of glass we're dealing with is a single-layer glass. This is called tempered glass. Sometimes it's called safety glass. This is used in the side windows and in the uh, rear windshield of a car. Now, this is designed to break in a very specific way. Okay, now we're coming to the part that I like, Sam. You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> well, I don't like to talk about that. Anyway, we'll give you an idea of just how strong some of this glass is. This is a plain old window glass. You can see it breaks into big pieces. This can cut you. Broke pretty easy, too. Exactly. Now, this is the windshield right here. You can see what happened here. Look at that. Broke holds all, all place, together. But it held together. Okay, let's try the safety glass. Okay. There you get an idea how strong that is. It's pretty tough stuff, but it's designed specifically to break, just like you see it here, all little pieces. That way, if the, when the car is in an accident, if you have to get out through the window, you don't get all cut up. It doesn't have big chunks like, like the plain window like glass. Like that, exactly. Well, you can see where we're going with this, folks. You know, it's important to have the glass installed properly to maintain the crashworthiness of the car. That's right, and not only has the window glass tra changed dramatically, all the technology in the glass, but also the installation, the type of adhesive they use, the equipment they use, the techniques, all of that's really different. Exactly. Well, we've got a pro coming in to show us how to do it. While he's coming in, we're going to take a short break, so stay with us. All right, let's clean up. Let's get this To avoid scratching up. your car's windshield, replace the wiper blades at the first sign of wear, and never run the wipers over dry glass. Hey, Wayne, good to see you. Hey, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, folks, our pro in auto glass just arrived. It's Wayne Palmer from Windshields America, and he'll come right to your home to replace your windshield. Wayne, here it is, pal. Here's the project. What's the first step you take, though, when you go to replace a windshield? First thing we're going to do is determine if it's repairable or it has to be replaced. Okay. If we can repair it, we can save you and your insurance company some money. Well, I like that, and the insurance companies like that. You bet they That's do. right. This thing took a pretty good shot, though. We've got a rock chip right here, and it looks like uh, it's right in the driver's field of vision. That's right. That's one of the reasons why that's not repairable, is because it's in the driver's view. Another reason is it's larger than what we'd like to repair. You mean this crack here where it's migrated? Exactly. Okay. Third reason would be that it looks like the brake has penetrated the second layer of glass, okay. which would make it non-repairable. Okay, so now we have to replace this. What's the first thing you do to replace it? First thing we're going to do is we're going to cover up the seats, we're going to cover the hood, and we're going to pull the rearview mirror. I'll get the mirror. Let's get started. All right. Now, we cover the seats with plastic to prevent glass from falling on them, and also to prevent any of the primers or the sealers from accidentally splashing on them. On this particular vehicle, we'll go ahead and we'll pull the windshield wipers and remove the cowl. Then we'll cover the hood. Okay, Wayne, now I see you're putting some tape down here. You've already got some tape right up here. You know, this attention to detail is important, isn't it? That's right. Hey, if we slipped on one of these corners, which is a good spot to slip, yeah, we could scratch the car. So a little preventative measure goes a long way. Well, that's what separates the pros from the hackers. You're right. And I see you got an array of tools here. It looks like you have to have some specialized tools to remove these windshields. Sure do. This is what we call a hook tool. Yeah. We use this to pull out some of our moldings and uh, lip in some gaskets. This is a cold knife. 
We use this to cut the windshield out if all goes well. Um, this assists the cold knife. This is a long knife. Gets those hard to reach places down on the dash that maybe the cold knife won't hit. And it looks like you got some power tools here too. Will That's you use those on this? Um, hopefully we won't have to, but we have them here if we need to. This is a fine knife. This is an interior cutout knife. And this equalizer gets all those real hard to reach places in the bottom. Okay, so depending on the application, you would use those. So you're going to try to use these first, right? Right. Okay, what's the first step now? First step we're going to do is pull out the reveal molding and get ready for the cutout. Okay. Now, as Wayne cuts out the windshield with a cold knife, he's taking special care to keep the blade up next to the windshield so he can leave as much of the old sealer on as possible. And he's also got to slow it down as he goes around the corner so he doesn't slip and chip the paint. After Wayne has cut through the adhesive, he separates the windshield and sets it aside. Okay, Wayne, now you got the windshield out and you made that look easy, but I have a question for you. You know, you wanted to, you slid the knife under the windshield and you cut it high so that you left all this, this sealant here. Why did you want to leave the sealant? Okay, this lets me know for the high and low spots uh, what we're going to have to fill in later on with the urethane. Okay, now you're saying, you're calling this urethane. I can see this is pretty tough stuff. Sure is. You know, but they use some other stuff for this as well. They used to use other stuff. This is what's supposed to be used now. Maybe okay. some other small operations are using butyl seal which is an excellent water sealer, mm -hmm. but it doesn't hold the windshield in, in an accident. Okay, so this really then, this is tough. It bonds the windshield really to the frame here or the body, so it gives you that structural strength. Right. How tight will that do that? Oh, it'll hold about 760 pounds a square inch when it's cured. Wow, that's a bunch. Of course, that's important too, because the airbag right here, when that blows out, that windshield's what holds the airbag in. If the right. windshield will pop out, the airbag's useless. Yeah, it didn't do you any good. What do you think, Sam? Nice job right here, I'll tell you. What can I get for you? I'm going to need some power for my beta gun. I'll go get the cord. Great. Okay, you got the windshield cut out. I know you got all this uh, leftover uh, urethane. Yeah. Now, what's your next move here? Next move is we're going to take a long knife. Okay. We're going to cut the urethane down to about one to two mils thick. Okay. You're not going to go all the way down to the metal? No, it's going to go to the metal. The best bond we can get would be urethane to urethane. Okay, and then you're checking, of course, for any imperfections and right. look at the body seams. As we get to a body seam here, and I'll show you. Pull it off. We're checking for rust. Okay. I'm okay. going to check our body seam, see if maybe the car's been in an accident before. Okay. Yeah, this one hasn't, so the body seam looks pretty good. If it had been, maybe we could have a problem down the road with it. I understand. Look at that. Well, that takes a lot of skill and experience, getting that so nice and thin and, and even like that, doing that freehand. Well, we've done a few of them. I'll bet you have. So continue to trim the urethane all around the windshield, even one to two mils on the complete opening. Next, we'll prepare the surface for primer. We'll coat this with a primer, being sure to cover all the bare metal spots. This will prevent rust. Hey, Dave, he's done a great job in this oh, thing. He's made it look easy. Well, we got the opening all prepped. The next step is to prep the windshield, put on the urethane, and then we can install it. But first, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll install the windshield, so stay with us. Okay. What, what do you got to do next now? Over 8 million vehicle windshields are replaced every year. Late end to end, they would reach across the length of the U.S and back again. That's going on pretty easy. You just about got that done. Mm. Hey, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, folks, we're busy prepping our windshield here. We've got our molding on. That just clips on around the outside edge like so. But this isn't the only thing we've done. We've done some other things too, haven't we, Wayne? Right. First thing we did is we cleaned the glass. Okay, and folks, you don't use just a household glass cleaner. This is a no. special type, isn't it? It's a it? special system. Everything from glass cleaners to primers to the urethane itself. And I noticed one thing, that you're wearing these blue gloves. Now, I like the color, by the way, but these aren't just ordinary gloves either, are they? No, they're not. They're 100% nitrile gloves. They allow no solvents to pass through the gloves onto my skin. And folks, what we're using here are some solvents and some adhesives that are not really available to the do-it-yourselfer, and they're pretty potent, so you've got to be very careful with it. Okay, what's the next step now? What are you doing here? Next step now is we're priming the glass. This is going to ensure a good bond between the frit and the urethane. Okay, now you mentioned the frit, Wayne, and this is something I've always wondered about. Is that this, this uh, painted area around the outside edge of the windshield? Sure is. Now, what's that for? Okay, the frit is basically a cosmetic, okay? Before, you used to have moldings covering the urethane. <clears throat> now you don't have moldings, you have flesh-mounted glass. So they designed the frit to cover the urethane. The other thing it does is it protects the urethane from ultraviolet rays. And that's important, isn't it? It sure is. We don't want it breaking down our seal. Okay, so you've got it just about finished here. 
I've already got the electrical cable hooked up over here, so I guess we're ready to put on the urethane, right? We are. Let's okay, go. Okay, let's get it done. Okay, folks. Now we're going to give you a little demonstration of what this is all about. Here's your cable or your electrical cable, Wayne. Get you plugged in here. Now, folks, you know at home you have the caulking gun, and you put your tube of caulking in there, you ratchet it down. Well, this is the same idea, only it's electrical. Here we use two different tubes in an electrical gun. What are these tubes for? This is the urethane for the, the beta seal system. This is the actual adhesive itself, which is urethane-based. Uh -huh. This is a curative. This, this gives us the quick drive time. Okay, so you got to mix them together. How do you do that? They go from the tubes up into the dynamic mixer. Right in there, then. Okay. When you power the drill, it spins the mixer, pumps the urethane, and away we go. It takes a lot of pressure to get that out, doesn't it? Sure does. That's okay, why they motorize this, it. Now, this works really quick, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay, let's demonstrate this thing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little test bead out, make sure we get a good proper mix. Okay. Looks good. Are you satisfied with that? Sure are. Okay, now, you can put this, what, you can put it either on the glass or on the, on the frame, right? On this car, we're going to shoot the car. We're just going to show you this as a okay. demonstration. Okay, so we'll just demonstrate what that's going to look like on the glass here, so. Okay, now, Wayne, I notice it's got a little V notch right down here. What is that notch for? The notch is so, when you apply your urethane, Yeah. You put in a triangle bead, when you set your glass on top of your urethane, it squishes down to a square. Okay, now why is that important? Well, you don't want to trap air between the glass and the urethane. You want to get as much seal as possible. Well, it makes sense to me. It sure does. Okay, well, let's go ahead and put this on. Great. Okay, got it? You ready? I'm ready, buddy. Here we go. Looks good. Okay, I'm all set to take it. You got all it? Right. Okay, yep. let's stand it up straight. You guide me down to the blocks? Yep, down to the blocks. Okay, let me tuck my molding in here. Okay, okay, I'm under the quarter. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let go here. Go right ahead. Here we go. There you go, we'll just give a little set in. Great. Okay, now what's real important is that this glass sets down into the epoxy it makes a good bond because that bond makes the glass become a structural member. It supports the A-pillar and the roof. The other thing it does, of course, is it retains, it stays in place when the airbag deploys in an accident. The airbag actually hits the windshield, most of the time breaks the windshield. If you watch that uh, slow speed footage of crash tests, the windshield actually comes out about this far and then goes back in. Now, one other thing that's important is there's a little bug here, and what this is, this is the manufacturer's ID. This happens to be a Guardian windshield. Now, Windshields America uses only windshields that meet or exceed factory OE specifications, so they're really good glass. Well, this looks pretty good, doesn't it, Sam? It looks great. You know, I want to see how he's going to fix that crack in the, in the Monte Carlo, so why don't you go put the car in the garage? Okay, I'll do it. This is pretty nice. More than nice. It's a nice, safe installation. This car, in 60 minutes, is going to pass all the tests for a, a dual airbag accident. That's terrific. Well, you're not done yet, Wayne, because we got that Monte Carlo for you to replace. But first, we're going to go ahead and button this up, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the way. Great. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll get that uh, cover in there. Okay, Wayne, this is the first time you had a chance to look at our Monte Carlo here, and uh, you think this chip is repairable? Sure looks like it. It's not in the driver's line of view. Okay. It's smaller than a quarter. Okay. And it's only impacted the first layer of glass. All right. Well, great. Now, this just happened. It came off a rock or something off a dump truck. They chipped it pretty good, but I see we have no cracks. Now, what if we had some migration of cracks around this thing? As long as we can cover the entire surface with a quarter, mm -hmm. we can fix it. Well, great. Okay, now, again, this thing just happened, and uh, uh, let's say we had a windshield chip for six months or a year. Could you still fix it? We can still fix it. Um, the only problem you're going to have is it may not come out as well because you'll have uh, windshield wiper fluid in it, some road dirt and grime. So you want to get it done as soon as possible. Okay, so the best time to do it is as soon as it happens. That's right. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that Dodge back to the neighbor. Why don't you guys uh, fix this window? Okay. Now, Wayne, I've got a test glass here for you. Folks, what we have is a windshield piece of glass out of a windshield. This is the double laminated deal with the uh, uh, filler in between. And it's got a little chip in it right here. It doesn't go all the way through. Now, Wayne, what's the process you use to repair these types of chips? First thing we're going to use is our glass medic repair system. Okay. Okay. We're going to clean out the old brake. Mm -hmm. We're going to inject the fluid in it using vacuum. Okay. We're going to use some pressure. 
We're going to cure it with an ultraviolet light. Okay, I want to see how you do that. Now, what's the first step here? First step on the car is to clean out the brake. Now, after Wayne cleans the brake, he'll mount the vacuum chamber. Once he has the vacuum chamber mounted, then he'll drop the resin into the degasification chamber. And install the piston. After the piston is installed, to will apply vacuum to pull the air out of the brake and draw the resin into the brake. After 15 minutes, the vacuum cup is removed and a thin mylar sheet is placed over the resin. Then an ultraviolet light is placed above the mylar and resin for five minutes until the resin cures. Okay, Wayne, is it done yet? Let's take a look. Pull our mylar off. Okay. Well, that scrapes right off. You know, that's virtually disappeared. Almost like a bug hit it. Now, what can a person save over having a repaired uh, windshield repaired as opposed to putting in a new one? With the average cost of a windshield, about $200, you're going to save quite a bit. That's a lot of money, any way you want to look at it. Have you got a bill for us? I do. Okay, we're going to give that to Sam. By the way, the repair, the installation, and the windshields are all warranted for as long as you own your car. But we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to show you some new products, so stay with us. What can I do to help you out here? Windshield, in the near future, may have all dashboard displays projected directly on the inside of the windshield. You won't have to take your eyes off the road to check your fuel or your speed. Hey, buddy, I was just out there looking at the Monte Carlo. That windshield repair came out great. Oh, that came out perfect. Hey, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. You know that little spot from the repair? Looked just like a little bug spot there. It was terrific. What do you got there, Sam? Well, I got a great little travel tumbler. This is the Nissan stainless uh, thermos travel tumbler. What you do, of course, is it's got a uh, double wall stainless with a vacuum chamber, and it keeps the drinks hot or cold for a long time, and it's got a nice little pop top on it. Got a good grip on it, so when you pull it up out of the console, you, you know, you got it firmly in your hand, and you won't spill it all over yourself. And if you have a spill, because these are like 29 bucks, you mm -hmm. can get them any place you can get a good thermos, okay? But the spill well on the top is like a big reservoir. If you get a spill, it'll contain it. You don't get it all over your clothes. Well, speaking of spills, I got the perfect product for that, and that's called the absorber. And what it is, it's sort of like a chamois. And here's what it does. It dries cars and boats without scratching. It'll hold over 50% more water, absorbs three times faster than a regular hide-type chamois. Now, and here's what it looks like, folks. This is it right here. And it unfolds all the way out a unit like this makes drying a car real easy nice part about it though is you can wash it oil or gas doesn't really harm it chemicals won't really hurt it and you know how you take a regular old chamois and you're cleaning off your car and it leaves that little lint stuff behind Absolutely. don't have to worry about it with this handy item put it in your car or your boat you'll need it nice product how much is something like that this is about uh, eight dollars you can get this from mg clean tools out of clarendon illinois handy product Nice. What do you got there? Well, I got the answer to one of the problems that people have, especially do it yourself, is you've got an age-old problem with the fuse burning. Okay, when you burn the fuse, what happens? You've got a, a, something stops working, you take the fuse cover off, you start looking around with a test light or a fuse tester, or pulling them out one at a time. Here's a nice little travel fuse assortment. There's 50 fuses in this, and this is from Fascination Lifestyles out of uh, um, Lakewood, New Jersey. It's about 29 bucks, okay, and there's 50 fuses in it. Mm -hmm. Now, the neat deal is you replace this, all the popular amperages are right here, Replace your fuse with these. When something stops working and you've got a blown fuse, you pull off your cover. When you pull off the cover over the fuse panel, the fuse that's blown is lit up. Makes it great, you know, makes it real easy. Yeah, you know, you bring up a good point. When you blow a fuse, you want to check that circuit because there is something wrong with it. Absolutely. Well, I've got something else here, Sam. You know, a while back we showed the folks this welding helmet. This is called the AccuStrike Hands-Free Welding Helmet. This is from Cherokee Industries out of Ord, Nebraska. It cost about $100. And here's what makes it unique. You know, like regular welding helmets, you got to put it on, raise it up, and you got to flip it down, do this whole number when you're trying to find your weld. Well, we save you some time here. They put a unique chin strap in it, just like this, so you can open up the, the lens like so, 
Also, if you open it up, you notice there's a lens in here as well. So if you're welding and you want to do some grinding, you can open it up. You don't have to put on any grinding glass. You've got a safety item here. Neat. The neat part about it is this chin strap. This really is a hands-free item. You can't hardly beat it. Well, we hope you've learned something about installing a windshield and repairing a windshield. And as you can see, it's really not for the amateurs, is it, Sam? Absolutely not. You don't want to try a do-it-yourself a job there. Have a professional do it right using the right tools. Because remember, now that you have airbags, the windshield is actually part of the safety item. It sure is. Well, once again, we've run out of time, but we'll see you again next time here on Shade Tree Mechanic. Bye-bye. Come on, let me show you how this works. All right. If you would like more information about the products you've seen on today's show or to purchase a VHS copy of this episode, call 1-800-682-TREE or write to the address on your screen. Please refer to the offer number shown. Tapes are $15.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Remember, 1-800-682-TREE.